listening to the Daily Gold Podcast, covering precious metals, the junior mining sector, and global capital markets for intelligent investors. Now, here is your host, Jordan Roy Byrne. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Daily Gold Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Guys, with me today is a great guest. When it comes to gold mining stocks in the mining sector, nobody understands the fundamentals better than my next guest. He's Gary Tanashian, editor and publisher of Notes from the Rabbit Hole, a great newsletter. Gary, let me get right into it. Um, I, I, I had you on, I think, two or three times last year, and you talked about the potential for you know gold to break 2100, silver, to potentially go to 34, even before uh, the stock market and the economy eventually rolled over. It looks like that view is playing out. Uh, give me, I don't, you know, I don't want to get like a, a 10 minute answer to a question because I know that you and I have a habit of droning on, but um, has, has your macro view changed at all? I mean, your macro market view, are we, are we looking at stagflation? Are we, looking at maybe a bit of stagflation and then disinflation. I know that's a, a bunch of questions there, but how do you see the macro playing out now uh, with, with precious metals specifically in mind? Tough question as far as uh, who's the horse and who's the cart, you know, who's pulling and who's pushing. Um, but I'm going to stick with the original view, which was uh, the disinflation, the Goldilocks, as we saw through 2003, the uh, technology leadership, semiconductor leadership, pro-cyclical, pro-economy, uh, inflation not too, not too hot, not too cool, everybody happy. Um, and gold quietly diverged that for a lot of 2023. Um, and my view was that Goldilocks was going to morph into something less comfortably disinflationary, in other words, a deflation scare. But uh, more recently in the last few months, there've been a lot of indications that we were going to get a bump up in inflation signals. You know, commodities were oversold, uh, crude oil was at a major support area. The thing was due to bounce. And frankly, if you look at the commodity indexes, um, it, it looks like a bullish, uh, downward consolidation and upturn, I, you know, that almost makes me want to flip inflationist at this point, but I am going to stick with the view that this is a counter disinflationary trend, counter to the disinflationary trend, revival in inflation signals. Uh, you know, we had a lot of hype this week with the uh, CPI and the services, the sticky services pricing and and all that, but also energy has uh, has taken the logical bounce as well, and that's driving a lot of costs, rent, housing, the whole deal. Um, so it, here it is, that the interest rates are bumping back up. The Fed is not imminently cutting rates as the hopes were, but I still believe this is a way station along the way to a deflationary resolution, at least a scare prior to the next major inflation problem. So I'm going to stick with that, even though I've been bullish on commodities uh, recently, I am not ready to to uh, jump aboard the inflation train uh, full bore at this point. No, I, I love it. There's so much nuance in your answer there. Uh, but that leads me to a follow-up, which is, what would it take? What signal would there have to be for you to say, you know what, I got to go inflationist now? Wow, that's a good question. Um, that's why I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Stump the guest. Um, so anyway, it, you know, I need to see long term interest rates start to moderate now. <clears throat> if they make a higher, um, a higher high to what was it? I can't remember exactly when the, the highs were made sometime in 2023. 
um, then obviously we're in a new inflationary phase. Uh, if interest rates and inflation expectations and all that start to tick new highs rather than look like a uh, just a rebound, the anticipated rebound, um, I'd say the Fed is losing control. Uh, meanwhile, you have the government in there happily uh, reaching into its debt pile of 34 trillion plus or whatever it's at now. And, you know, in an election year, and I think that really plays into it, I try to stay out of the politics, but this year I cannot. Um, there's a lot of fiscal shenanigans going on because it's a very divisive election year. And uh, I think it's do or die, you know. And so the public be damned as far as interest rates go and inflation, they, they've got to keep this thing, <clears throat> this jalopy on the road, you know. So uh, it could get out of control to a stagflationary environment, but I don't think it's there yet. And I think that after the election, I think this thing's going to uh, just let a lot of air out of its balloon. Yeah, um, even like e even if we go into stagflation mode, I mean, it, at some point you have inflation, you have stagflation, but at some point when the economy really weakens, you know, then because of the recessionary, disinflationary or deflationary forces, those come about and then, you know, naturally inflation starts to come down. Um how much because you know we know that the economy is pretty weak but if we get some bout of inflation or stagflation is that something that could last more than like a year or two uh i, I don't know i mean we're in a, <laughs> a new world here um with the breakout in long-term yields for the first time in decades uh i will not pretend to to have it predicted and have it in the bag as far as what's coming I will commit, however, to tracking it and making logical sense of it each, you know, through each phase of it. But um, who knows? Uh, you know, how does the system end? I do believe the system is being drastically altered. And I don't know if, if the climax is, is uh, hyperinflationary or deflationary, but I believe what, what comes after this election year uh, balls out inflation uh, attempt. Uh, I shouldn't say balls out, but you know they're in there <laughs> doing their best. And I have a tinfoil hat theory that former Fed Chief Janet Yellen, current Biden administration uh, Secretary Treasury, is in good coordination with the Federal Reserve, fiscal and monetary uh, forces working together. The Fed is tight in the headlines, but out the back door they're not so tight so uh after the election i have no clue jordan you know but i will be ready for it whatever whichever event happens i mean is the action the price action gold this beautiful breakout of a 13-year cup and handle pattern is that telling you anything could that be telling us you know it doesn't matter whether it's deflationary or inflationary the gold trend is going to be strong i mean i don't want to you know be presumptuous here with my questions but gi give me because as you say the macro world is so difficult to discern to understand which way it's going to go is gold just telling us perhaps you know it doesn't really matter gold's broken out it's going to move higher yeah i think it's telling us counter cyclical you know, just very simply that, that the forces of the bubbles are over, or uh, as I've been calling the stock market, a dead man walking. You know, I, I believe the stock market is in a major ending phase that could well go through most of this year, or at least into the elections. Um, the healthier thing for the stock market to do would be take a hard correction first and clear everything out for a whopper of a a into the year second half uh, rally. But, it, you know, and gold could get hammered in a situation like that. But it has broken out. You know, you and I have both seen the, the uh, parameters for that. The first target is 2450. It's getting pretty darn close. And that's based on the pattern that uh, was formed after the large cup and handle pattern. 
had already formed, which is uh, a longer term target of 3000. And depending on which way to go, the, things go in the near term or this year, uh, 3000 may be coming quicker than I originally thought. But gold is just fine and it's predicting bad things coming. You know, I'm hearing noise about China buying yeah. and federal or central banks buying. I ignore all that. And uh, that rising gold play price is somebody buying for protection against something. I don't think it's necessarily World War III. I'm hearing that very often lately. I mean, all this stuff may factor in and be in play, but <clears throat> gold is forecasting bad things. And for me, it's the bubble that is in trouble, <laughs> you know? Uh, and the bubble has been in policy making, routine inflationary policy due to the disinflationary decades uh, against which they, they kind of did their magic. And that's over as evidenced by what happened in treasury yields in 2022, it just busted the trend to pieces. So um, I think gold is just, I think the gold market has had enough and it's just saying, a new macro is coming and it's one component of that new macro. Yeah. So yeah, let me follow up on the, the treasury yields. Cause I think we talked about this in one of our interviews last year. Isn't that the catalyst for this new macro as you're saying, because now that treasury bonds, I mean, I don't want to, presume you're thinking it's a secular bear now, but at least I think it's a secular bear in the bond market. I mean, that that is basically putting a stop to all these shenanigans because yes. when you're in a when people are are going to buy bonds, you know, they, they can print without, you know, seemingly we know there's negative consequences always, but you know, now now that they, you know, they're gonna spend tons of money and print at some point, um, you know, the bond market hmm. is really going to uh throw a fit unlike you know from 1990 to 2020 well i think it's projecting that right now and yes it is a bear market a secular bear i believe that breakout was too dramatic as if it had enough of uh the shenanigans of the previous decades so it's to me it's going to be handcuffs slapped on the fed and the government although the government may choose to disregard and just put the, the pain on the public through rising interest rates and continue on its business. I don't know. Um, but the Fed, I think, is being shoved to the sideline as far as relevance goes. Um, but it's a, it's a new bond bear, obviously. So any deflationary <laughs> situation I'm looking at is interim to uh, probably, as you said, a, a stagflationary macro that that will wreck the economy just as well as a, uh, a deflationary event would do it, just in a different way. I think it's more corrosive and, um, you know, uh, certain areas, certain global areas may outperform, uh, obviously, resources and commodity rich areas, uh, precious metals, the whole deal, I think will outperform and um a, a grinding bear market not too dissimilar from the the 90 parts of the 1970s could take effect but it's just not going to be easy i'm not going to uh look at a doomsday scenario but there could be a lot of pain attached to any progress that's made in the economy and there'll be a lot of change and uh cycling and rotation um so yeah it, it, it's a nuanced situation and uh i had used the the downtrend the multi-decade downtrend in long-term treasury yields as a guide to the the ongoing disinflationary continuum and then when it broke i said well <laughs> time to figure out what this means and i'm still in that process you know i'm not going to I'm not saying, see, I told you so about anything and not not predicting anything, but certainly I know things are changing. And the biggest culprit or candidate that I see out there is that massive stock market bull 
from, you know, depending on where you want to market from, let's say 2000, uh, instigated by the bubble in policy. And I don't think policy is able to be bubble policy anymore. I think it's been handcuffed. Yeah, very important point. Uh, let's go a little micro here. Let's delve into the gold stocks. Could you explain yeah. why the gold stocks are and gold mining is counter cyclical? Because I think people have been almost conditioned in recent years to think that, well, if the you know market goes down, I can't make any money in gold stocks or, you know, if the market, if the economy crashes and we have a recession, like that's bad for gold stocks. And I mean, in, in some cases in the short term, yes, it can be. But I would just like you to explain the macro uh, drivers behind gold stocks and gold mining and why it's counter cyclical. Sure. Um, yeah, it could be bad for gold stocks uh, when when a recession becomes obvious because they're rallying with all the cyclical stuff right now. So they're not rallying in their purest fundamental suit. So they could get knocked down because I don't feel like the uh, that the true fundamentals are fully engaged, although they are coming along really well. But this rally uh, is going with the inflation stuff. And, um, you know, we have our targets on the miners and and that's in the near or intermediate term. Um, but the best will be when the economy fails and gold starts to outperform stocks as it already is doing with most commodities, even though, uh, all this inflation, uh, signaling is whipping back up again, gold is maintaining uptrends versus copper, uh, commodity index, uh, other metals. Um, so it's all good. And um, we need, though, the psychological end of it uh, to come into place. And that is for gold to really bust out and begin trending up versus U.S. and global stock markets. And that'll be the final component to a purest fundamental view where that stuff is failing. And gold doesn't need to go up in that instance. It just needs to nicely outperform, which it will. If, if the economy decelerates and we go contracyclical. So using uh, just one example, one commodity example, um, probably half of gold mining costs are related to crude oil and energy. And when gold resumes its rise in terms of oil, which is touted by a lot of inflationists as basically uh, black gold, right? They're both doing the same thing and for the same utility. Well, they're not. Uh, economies drive oil, as well as some good old fashioned, um, you know, sovereign price manipulations. But um, we're talking about looking for the counter cycle, the um, failure of the inflated economies and gold rising in those terms, as well as commodities. And the gold miners, <clears throat> they will leverage that positive performance just as they have leveraged for much of the last 20 years. They have leveraged gold's mediocre to poor performance versus those cyclical things, especially stocks. So logically, gold miners have been garbage in this macro, in the bubble macro. In the post-bubble macro, um, it'll be something different and it will take most people by surprise. And I'm not here with my my um, pom-poms or anything like that. I, I just have to report what I see. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see at this point. We're in a grinding transition. Yeah, those are great points. I know you've probably seen this, but look at many of the peaks oh. in oil in the last 20 years. And they some major peaks in oil, they kind of line up with lows in gold mining stocks. They often do. Um, so that that speaks uh, just one example of what you're talking about. Good point. Um, okay, so yeah, talking about the gold miners, let's talk about silver. Um, I know you look at silver a little bit differently uh, than most people. Um, so how do you tell us how you look at silver, and then what your near term outlook is? Um, well, technically, <laughs> pardon me, I'm fighting some allergies this week, but um, technically the breakout that just happened 
uh, there's been a trend line breakout of a pattern is target, targeting $35 an ounce, no matter what it does uh, post breakout, which I suspect there'll be some violent uh, pullbacks and rallies and whatnot. Um, I see silver going to 35, probably commensurate with gold going to 2450 in the not too distant term, you know. Um, but to me, silver, even more than gold, and I use gold as an indicator, and even more so silver, because gold has greater value to me personally. You know, it, it always has. It's just been more stable. Uh, I've, I've never been a kind of a wild west, you know, uh, cowboy or anything like that. So, um, pardon me, I have a cat who's oh, speaking no, of that no worries. <laughs> um, so I think the guide will be the silver gold ratio, um, which tried to break out this week. And last I looked today, it was having a little trouble uh, maintaining its breakout, but we will see. I think that if the silver gold ratio takes off, then the inflation trades will continue on in the short term. If it pulls back, um, you know, all that stuff should get a correction here. But um, I'm no big silver bull and I'm not negative on silver either. I just, um, it, to me, it's a speculation or the speculative precious metal. And it's got more industrial pro-cyclical utility than gold does. And I want gold for insurance, not silver. You know, um, I want gold for insurance against, you know, the bubble. Um, he's really working me over here. Um, so anyway, that's my view on silver. It's it's fine. There's a time to be bullish on it. And, you know, the, the technical end of it has broken out for a target of 35. And that's all I'm going to look for at this point. And um, I'll stick with gold because I'm kind of an old fashioned guy and uh, more conservative. It just just to follow up on your targets there. So you said silver could go to 35 with gold going to 2450. It, 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 Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, Jordan. So yeah, in case yeah, in case you missed that. So you, you said silver to 35, but you know, gold target of 2450. Wouldn't gold, I mean, gold is pretty close to 2450 already. Wouldn't gold need to make another leg higher beyond that for silver? to get all the way up to 35? I don't know. You know, a lot would be dependent upon what is driving the precious metals. You know, if it's more inflationary or more um, disaster insurance, I, I don't know how well they correlate. Um, although they have both been downtrodden since 2020 and both have been due. Um, obviously we know silver is a mile below its all time highs and gold has broken to blue sky. And that is the most important thing to me that gold finally, uh, jumped the Creek and got out and, um, silver, uh, typically doesn't it, uh, make a late stage, like in, in precious metal bull markets, doesn't silver signal the end by putting on one of its vertical moonshots. It did that in the spring of 2011, and then 2011 saw the top in the precious metals complex. Not sure what happened in the 70s. I know the thing went to 50, and I'm not sure if that was, I think that was the blowout phase as well then. Yeah, it was. So silver, when it gets a move on, it can be striking and stunning. And um, it's probably best that it doesn't do that right now, you know, since it's, it's a late stage signaler. Um, yeah, you know, someone. I am someone bullish said, on silver. I just don't yeah. make a big deal about it. Yeah, someone said that to me in a comment. That makes a lot of sense. Um, but the, the gold silver ratio is there a, a level on the line there that if it breaks, then you'll sense silver will really start to outperform? Are you keen on like a certain level? Because you said it it tried to break down the gold silver ratio, but didn't quite do it yet. Um, well, now that we're on video, I can't really go to my charts, but um, 
I, I just, uh, I, I haven't been keeping track or I don't have the uh, prices memorized, but it did break out. Uh, what was it last week? I think it just, it took out the trend line. I think I've got a few, um, few charts of SLV showing the commensurate level on X Twitter. Um, that thing, that was very I'll, key. I'll, I'll throw those in when we publish okay, the video. Sure, please. But, so, but your, your point is that we are close or very close or at a point where conceivably silver could really outperform gold strongly in the near medium term um or at, yeah. least poten at least potentially so yeah i see no technical sign of that though jordan so silver is still at best <laughs> trending flat versus gold even with the recent rally in the silver gold ratio it's still trending flat and uh to me that's been a negative divergence to the inflation trades and it's another reason why I, until proven otherwise, with silver making a jailbreak in gold terms, uh, it's another reason why I see th this as a temporary rebound in inflation signaling upon the macro. Um, so yeah, I'm not, not getting excited about silver. I'm bullish on it, but uh, that's all I can say. I'm bullish on the on nominal silver. I think gold is up to something else, and I, I don't know for sure what it is. Maybe it's a combination of uh, many, many inputs, you know, from global demand to disaster insurance to war to um, the bubble ending to counter-cyclical pressures coming and people... Uh, they don't know it yet because the market is a dead man walking, but people will be compelled to seek refuge you know and i think the gold market is starting to pick up on that why else would it be breaking out like that while the stock market is in blue sky you know having escaped the supposed bear market of 2022 um happy days are here again but uh something's going on and um gold is really where my focus is Silver will be fine, but let's bear in mind that it may not <clears throat> make the real vertical crazy silver-like move until the later stages of whatever this, uh, wherever this bull market goes. But I am, you know, as far as transitioning back to the gold miners, uh, I want to see, if I'm a gold mining bull, I want to see the bubble end and I want to see silver not necessarily outperform gold or if it does i want just it doing it not copper and um you know the industrial metals complex and oil and all that stuff so i'm not really a, what you'd call a silver analyst or a big silver bull um you know your website is called the daily gold and that's why i'm here <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's a really good match um uh, yeah, as we close, Gary, well, I guess one more question. Are there any other, um, I guess, well, scratch that for a second. Is there anything you want to mention that I didn't ask you about that you think is important? Mm, no, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. Are there are there any other any other markets by chance that are interesting you at this point? Uh, well, it depends on the dollar. You know, I've been interested in Asia in general, possibly even China as a contrary play. Um, but I think that that, you know, the U.S. dollar is going to need to simmer down and the perception of tight Fed policy needs to needs to go back in the closet. And then I think, you know, I think there could be a time of uh, rotation globally to Asia emerging markets and um, the more resource rich commodity rich type areas and we've actually seen that on on the recent correction uh or pullback let's call it in u.s stocks um last weekend in N nftrh i um I, I mentioned that uh both australia and canada have broken to new highs while the u.s was pulling back and it's not coincidental that those are resource commodity rich economies 
And also we have the TSXV, the Venture Exchange in Canada, still rallying. It's not not pulling back. So, um, you know, I think the dollar, it's putting on a big show right now. And um, it has broken bullish and kept its its intermediate uptrend alive. But it's all based on perception of the Fed and um, that the Fed is tight and t being forced to tighten further. But um, if if the dollar weakens, then those are some of the areas I'd be looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, okay, Gary, as we wrap up here, please tell our listeners about notes from the rabbit hole, where they can go to follow your work and how they can subscribe. Sure. It's the website is N F T R H.com notes from the rabbit hole. Um, this week and beyond, I have just, uh, started a two week free trial with no strings attached or, or anything. Um, you know, sometimes I have to get up on, on my marketing horse here and uh, let people know what's going on there. And sometimes you want to just show them that the whole, uh, the whole service, including weekly reports, uh, market updates during the week, both stock highlights and macro market updates. And um, it, the free trial will allow two weeks of access to everything and then you can make your decision as to whether it's for you or not i think it is but <laughs> we'll let uh prospective su subscribers make that decision okay so give out the website one more time nftrh.com okay nftrh.com okay great right. gary thanks so much for coming on really appreciate it just love your analysis on everything and uh, hopefully I can uh, have you back maybe later this year and, you know, we can see what new mess we're coming into. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you, Jordan. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning into the Daily Gold podcast. For more interviews, editorials and analysis, log on to thedailygold.com. And for premium coverage of precious metals and the best junior mining companies, visit thedailygold.com forward slash premium.